All right, well, today we're doing a kind of more high level conversation about just AP deductions uh, at Walmart. We're gonna be going through, um, I guess some of the lesser known ones. Um, we, we spend a lot of time talking about shortages um, because they're the most devastating in terms of revenue loss for the most part, and they're oftentimes invalid. Today we'll be going over through uh, some, some other kinds of revenue loss that on the one hand are not always invalid or not often invalid. Sometimes some of these are very, um, most of the time they're um, accurate. It's more just a matter of trying to avoid them and um, and um, trying to understand them, understand what they mean about your supply chain. Um, so that's what we'll be talking about today, um, but Melody will be doing most of that. Uh, I am Peter, this is Melody. We have been doing webinars for a number of years now together. Um, and um, yeah, that's us. We're the supplier. We... Our background, just, <laughs> just this is us. <laughs> that's all I need to know. All right. Yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm Melody. So I I lead the supplier wiki team here at Supply Pike. Um, I actually started out in product development, working on the deductions product. So I have some some knowledge on on how these. Uh, these codes work, especially in the Walmart world, and really excited to learn or share some of those learnings here with you guys here today. Cool. You want to talk about Supplier Wiki? Yeah. Um, so basically, for those of you who are new or who um, haven't been on a webinar before, um, our goal is to is to create a lot of uh, educational content that is accessible um, and that helps suppliers with their supply chain and uh, in the uh, in the long run will help them. Um, their retail business as well. So basically, we spend a lot of time talking about things like this, um, different kinds of pain points in the in the process, not just with Walmart, but with um, other major retailers as well. So what I always like to kind of pitch at this point is if there's anything that you're uh, curious about or that you're struggling with or that you're wondering about, um, we always like um, to know that so that we can share more of those resources that we already have with you. Um, but that we can also kind of grow our library of resources um, to be more, um, uh, to, to uh, have more of the big picture there. Um, so yeah, but that's what we do. Variety of different types to eBooks, uh, webinars, articles. So um, if you don't have the time to be in a webinar every week, then um, check out some of our articles. Um, today, we're going to do an uh, overview of what we mean by AP deductions, what those are at Walmart. Um, which will be pretty brief. And then we'll get into the different uh, sort of uh, code types that you see. There's a bunch of different deduction codes at Walmart. Um, we're going to cover some of the apps involved with the disputing process for AP, uh, AP deductions. Again, some of these are not, it's not like the same thing as shortages where you can win a whole bunch of money back by disputing invalid deductions. Um, but some of them, it is important. It, it's still important to walk through that dispute process because at some point a mistake will be made. Um, so that'll be more of what that third section is there. Then we're going to do general questions and discussions. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, get your questions in early if you have any already. Um, if there's something that you uh, wanted to bring here, um, get them in early because um, we'll have a, a about a 10 minute kind of window for that at the end. Um, and then after that, we'll do a little product preview for anyone who's curious about Supply Pike and um, our AP deduction solution. Uh, speaking of questions, we uh, like to keep kind of the group uh, engagement and the questions a little bit separate with those two um, uh, functions. So the if you have a question, please put that in the Q&A tab and then um, we can queue them up that way based on uh, relevance. Some of them might be particularly relevant if they're in early enough on a particular slide, and then I could kind of interrupt Melody, and then um, we could talk about it in that particular moment. Um, and then for more kind of like public engagement stuff, the fun things, if you want to tell us what's a skill that you wish uh, you could have, uh, go ahead and add that to the webinar chat as well. Um, that's what the chat is for. Sometimes we'll ask you guys questions um, to kind of pull the crowd um, uh, about maybe a particular pain point or something like that. Um, so that's what the chat is more for is the public engagement. Um, and then a question that we often get, uh, for these webinars is, uh, will we be getting a, a copy of the slide deck? Will we 
be getting a recording? And the answer is yes, for both of those. We have a YouTube um, that you can subscribe to, and then you'll see all of the webinars that we do um, as they get uploaded. But um, if you signed up for this webinar with a particular email, that email will receive the copy of the recording and the copy of the slide deck in three to four business days. Um, so if you're if you're using someone else's email, bear that in mind too. Um, that you'll have to uh, you'll have to get that from them. And a little bit about supply pike. Since we're doing a product preview today, at the very end, we'll kind of introduce uh, y'all to this um, supply pike. Basically, the AP deductions that we're talking about today, um, supply pike is there to kind of take all of the um, all of the pain and the work out of that process. Um, by automating deductions with shipping document integration and a bunch of other kind of retail link integrations. So um, it's a very exciting product that we care about a lot. Um, uh, it's really interesting from my perspective, we have um, um, so many different product categories that we're a part of. So we get a pretty, we get to see um, what the supplier story is like from people all the way across that spectrum. Um, so that's very cool. The, the product category spectrum, but also the size spectrum, as you can see from some of the brands that we're, um, that we're working with here, um, there's some really big hitters and then there's some really kind of um, smaller startups that um, can benefit from what we're doing too. So uh, all that is really exciting to me because we get to see you know the whole kind of picture. Um, and that helps me with um, this content creation and all that. So um, I think that's all that I have from me for now. And Melody, take it away. And I may interrupt you at some point with a question. Perfect. I love questions. So it will work out great. Okay. Well, I'm excited to go over this with you guys here today. So like Peter said, high level overview of um, AP deductions at Walmart, and we're going to, we're going to be covering all of the basics. So really excited to, to talk about that with you guys here today. I know that I'm going to be mentioning also a lot of resources that we have on supplier wiki, and maybe Peter will be able to throw them on the chat. Um, or if you guys just want to go and visit, you know, supplierwiki.com, um, you should be able to find all of the resources on there as well. So perfect, let's get started. Okay. So what are the difference? What's the difference between Walmart's AP deductions and AR fines? So deductions are basically going to be um, taken from your payment from Walmart. So it's going to get just automatically deducted from your check versus compliance fines are going to be things that you are actually billed. And if you do not um, pay that bill through high radius, then it's actually then going to be deducted from your check. So compliance fines or AR fines are seen as um, something that you, you owe Oh, oh, Walmart, and therefore you have to pay them for it versus deductions are just automatically taken from whatever they, they pay you. Um, AP deductions, are, we also include post audits. So if you guys are not familiar with post audits, these are the types of deductions or fines that Walmart can actually go and review all of your transactions for the past like two years to go and recover those fines. Um, it is going to be something that is happening post um, post the check or post the deduction. Um, it's something that will usually happen afterwards and you know, we'll see it happen even up to two years after um, a transaction has taken place versus a deduction is actually coming um, straight from the invoice or straight from your check. Um, that's going to be a lot closer to whenever a transaction or an invoice is happening versus a post audit can be years after the fact. Um, for an AP or um, for AP level deductions, you're actually going to be disputing those in the accounts payable dispute portal or APDP and retail link versus a post audit. You're actually going to have to go and dispute with a with the auditing team. So there are about three different auditing teams inside of Walmart that Walmart will actually um go and contract out. Um, and so you might see it come from a variety of those different partners and actually have to go and dispute it with them. So let's do a, just a high level overview of those AP deductions. So like I mentioned, um, those 
AP level deductions that are coming off of your check based off of an invoice are actually originating from inside of Walmart versus a post audit is going to be coming from one of those third parties. That deduction is actually going to be withheld from a check. So you'll, you'll find that come through on APIS or the accounts payable inquiry system um, inside of retailing. That's another retailing app. Oh, and I can see bullet points. Bullet point four actually mentions that. So you can go and check all of the, the deduction and the in information coming from that. And we'll actually show you guys a few examples of what that would look like. Um, your claim number is typically going to be your invoice number. And we'll talk about kind of those differences here in a little bit. Um, typically, a deduction is actually going to include a deduction code. There's about 70 different um, codes for that, and we'll we'll go over some, or 75 different codes. We'll go over some of those. But if you guys want a deeper dive into some of those different codes, we actually have a deduction code explain guide for Walmart. We have it for other retailers as well, but the one for Walmart is going to cover each of the different codes, what it means, um, if it can be disputed, how to actually go and dispute it, and then if it's prevented preventable, you know, some best practices to go and prevent that from happening. So go check that out. Maybe Peter can send it through the chat, but um, that's going to cover all of those different codes and is a pretty um, explicit guide on, on, on what you could be doing for those. But we'll cover some high level, some of the common ones here in this webinar. And then, as I mentioned previously, that is actually going to be disputed through APDP, and we'll cover how you can actually dispute that today. So one of the nasty things that happens when deductions is um, it's not going to just impact you once. There are different compliance programs or ways that Walmart may potentially fine you. And what we've seen is that these fines can, can really stack up. So in addition to these AP or invoice level deductions, you can have um, multiple problems from the same issue um, that result in compliance fines, um, such as the OTIF or OTIF as we call it, the on time and full program, um, which we have a lot of content on if you want to check that out. Another another ebook that covers all of that, as well as a few webinars. And then SQEP or SQEP, Supplier Quality Excellence Program at Walmart. So those are two of those A level or AR level um, charges or fines, compliance programs that Walmart has that you're actually going to um need to dispute through something like a high radius, it, which is a different program or different portal um, inside of Walmart's kind of ecosystem. High radius is actually a third party versus some of the other um, apps that I've mentioned, like APIS or um, APDP are actually inside of Retail Link, which is Walmart's um, with their own application or portal that they have for their suppliers. Um, so all of that to be said, even with one, one small issue of shortages, you might see a variety of different codes that come through for that based on the variety of different programs that Walmart has. Um, and unfortunately, none of these programs really share information. So if you go and dispute it successfully through um, APDP or dispute that AP level deduction, um, you will then also have to go and dispute the compliance fines as well in each of their own kind of separate portals in their separate ways. So if there's a shortage deduction, which is usually a code 24, there's typically going to be a PO defect that is going to be coming through the, the SWEP program. And then there also might be a um, in full fine for the Walmart um, Walmart's OTIF program. So each of those would have to be disputed separately, which can you know cause a headache for for um, finance teams inside of suppliers um, of trying to, you know, recover money for something that that may have been Walmart's fault or invalid on Walmart's side in the first place. So, um, and then one other thing to note here is, yeah, even dispute one deductions can then also be deducted again through a post audit. And, and so, you know, even if you've gone through all of the hard work of disputing it in each of these three different programs and winning all of that money back, you might see a any post audit come through two years later of saying, hey, actually, we think that that, that fine was still valid and that we gave you that money incorrectly. And then you would have to go and dispute that post audit again. So it can be quite a headache. Um, I know I've thrown a lot of acronyms and a lot of words at you here today. We do have really in-depth resources on a lot of these different programs like SWEP, like OTIF, like post audit. So um, please feel free to go and check those out. And, and maybe Peter can send a few of those through. 
Awesome. So um, we'll kind of walk through the, the workflow of what we suggest in terms of best practices when to actually go and dispute deductions or prevent them from happening. But here is a high level overview of kind of how you can prevent deductions or avoid deductions um, to the, the, the best of your ability kind of in the um, prevent it, even if most of the time it's going to be Walmart's fault, especially in the case of like a shortage. So um, some best practices that we suggest are submitting only one invoice per PO whenever possible. Um, a lot of Walmart systems are going to be automated. And so if it is something that um, could easily confuse a computer, um, then like sending multiple invoices um, for a single PO, um, that is just going to automatically kind of trigger a deduction that's going to be submitted to you, even if, even if a human reading it could fully understand, okay, I have an invoice for this part of the PO and invoice for this part of the PO, a computer might, might take that in error. Um, you're going to also want to confirm your item setup. So this is going to be your vendor pack quantities and your warehouse pack warehouse pack quantities. Um, again, you're just wanting to make that very easy for a computer to kind of understand and um, match up one for one um, kind of what you're trying to accomplish in terms of your purchase order and your invoice. You're going to want to transmit your invoices with item Walmart item numbers. Again, trying to make it as easy for the computer to match up one for one. You're going to want to match your invoice to the PO and don't make adjustments on your invoice that don't match the PO. Um, you're going to want to not master pack different items. And um, we have some really great resources on kind of like master packing, vendor pack, warehouse packs, um, what that all means. So, um, you know, if that's something that's confusing to you, then then maybe we can send it. I know I'm making Peter really work today for the <laughs> work in the chat. I'm sorry, Peter, but um, uh, check those out just to better understand like what are Walmart's packaging guides, um, because that's a, what 400, 300 page document. Um, we were able to kind of distill that down into different um, into a more, I guess, easily digestible um, resource. So maybe we can send some that in the chat. Sorry, Peter. And then this last one I use very sparingly. Um, I have talked to large enterprises before and suggested this. And I know that depending on how your warehouse is set up and your supply chain is set up, this is kind of easier said than done. But what we have found to be really beneficial, especially in terms of shortages, if you're experiencing a lot of shortages, especially whenever a skew or like a box looks very similar to another box that you were sending, um, just trying to differentiate um, those two boxes. Because whenever a um, whenever you're shipping product to Walmart, it's getting received at a DC by a human. And so um, sometimes by a computer, but, but most of the time um, by a human. And what they're going to be doing is they're going to be looking at the, the pallet or the, the shipment that you've sent them. And they are just kind of counting and saying like, hey, okay, I have, you know, six of these orange juice um, packs and I have three of these pomegranate, but if they have a, a difficult time telling the difference between like, what is an orange juice, um, you know, what are they ordering of the orange juice and what are they ordering of pomegranate? Um, then sometimes the human might mistakenly write, oh, I only received nine of the orange juice. And so what you could potentially do is just make sure that the packaging that you're sending to them has maybe even different um, stickers or uh, colored stickers to differentiate, okay, no, this is actually what the orange juice is. This is what the pomegranate is. Um, you'll see that imagery, I think, will pop up here again in this, this, um, this slide deck, but our shortage webinar will also cover that pretty extensively of some best practices that we suggest for that. Again, I understand that that might be easier said to, than done, but if you're experiencing a lot of shortages, mm -hmm. um, this is something that we've seen many suppliers um, employ successfully and be able to actually prevent some of those shortages from happening. Awesome. Okay, so um, let's talk about the deduction code types. So like I mentioned, um, inside of Walmart, we have shortages, which are, are related to shipping or receiving. Um, it, again, um, a lot of these we will find will actually be invalid and are easier to, want to win back. Um, and, and sometimes you can prevent them from happening if you just make it easier for the person who is receiving the product, um, able to tell the difference between you know the, what, what you're shipping. 
Um, next, we have pricing discrepancies. Um, so we'll, we'll get into that here a little bit deeper in a second. Allowances. Um, so that is going to be um, what Walmart expects from you based on your, your supplier agreement. Um, so the contract that you are setting up with Walmart, whenever you become a supplier with them, or you're renegotiating your terms. So what allowances or what discounts are you giving Walmart, um, due to the nature of your business or, um, kind of what they expect returns are exactly what they sound like. Um, it's whenever something is getting returned or not able to be used due to, to different issues. Um, may, that may be at a store level or a DC level. Um, there's, there's different types of returns and then miscellaneous. So this is just going to be kind of that bucket of everything else. Like I mentioned, there's roughly 75 um, different AP level deduction codes. And again, that's not going to really encapsulate a OTIF fine or a SWEP fine. Um, that's going to be focused more on those um, invoice related deductions. Now there are deduction codes, I believe it's 99 that denotes a OTIF um, fine. Um, that is just going to be basically, um, Walmart showing you, Hey, you didn't pay that OTIF bill. And so I'm now deducting it from your check. Um, so they will do that if you don't, if you don't pay it within, within a month. And usually typically that's suppliers. If you are, um, you know, wanting to take on, you're not wanting to dispute that OTIF fine. Um, you're going to want to just let it go through the system and deduct it from your check anyways. Awesome. Okay. So let's talk about a deduction code example for each category. And we're going to go into this a little bit more in depth here in a second, but, um, for example, a shipping or shortage code is going to be a code 22. Um, this is whenever the quantity of an item on the invoice does not match the quantity that the facility says that it's received. So it's just a shortage. It's a, it's Walmart saying, Hey, I expected this much product and you only shipped me this much product. Um, and so I am going to not pay you for the product that I didn't receive. Next, we have a merchandise code. Um, so this is going to be a code 93. Um, this is going to be one of those returns that I was kind of talking about um, where merchandise was actually returned due to damages that prevented the item from being sold before the merchandise was ever placed on the store floor. So this is going to be kind of one of those DC level returns saying like, hey, this product was, was damaged. And so therefore I am not, or we are not able to sell it. And therefore um, we're going to be charging you the cost of that as well as handling fees and everything else. Um, next, we have a code 10, which this is a pricing code that just denotes that um, there were discrepancies in the allowances um, that were available on the invoice versus the PO. So Walmart expected for you to give them this many level of allowances, you didn't, and therefore they're going to be deducting um, that amount from your, from your check. And then lastly, not to be ex not to be confused with the pricing code, but the allowance code itself. And so this is whenever an allowance is listed in the supplier agreement. So it's not listed on the PO, but it's listed in the supplier agreement, but it's actually not included on an invoice. So Walmart is saying, hey, we talked about this. We have a contract. Um, we may not have included it on the, the purchase order, but it is in our supplier agreement. And therefore, we are going to um, charge you for this. And we'll dive into these a little bit deeper. Perfect. Okay. So disputing code 22. So um, for this example, let's say you've received a, a, a shortage. It says goods built, not shipped is the, the technical term for it. Um, in this scenario, your BOL or your bill of lading was stamped as received in full at the facility, but then the invoice was transmitted for quantities greater than what the facility claimed to received. So what you're going to do here is you're actually going to... Um, uh, prove that the invoice quantity matches the received quantity. So you're going to probably give them your bill of lading or your proof of delivery, some of your documentation, which we're going to cover that pretty extensively later on in the presentation, but you're going to provide your proof documentation and say, Hey, you said that you didn't receive all of this. I have, um, proof. I have the shipping documents that say that you do. And so therefore I'm going to dispute this with you and, um, get my money back. 
Um, one thing to make note of here, and I, I've been kind of referencing it, but the top three codes by dollar amounts are going to be those shortage related deductions. So those are going to be your code 22s, 25s, and 24s. Um, all of the top codes, whenever you're looking at um, what are impacting suppliers by dollar amount, maybe not necessarily by quantity, but how much money it is actually costing you are shortage related. And that code 22 that we just covered is, is one of the, the worst offenders for that. Okay, so disputing a code 93. So this again is gonna be a merchandise return. It's happening at the DC level. And I kind of mentioned earlier on that there are other codes that go along with a code 93. And it's kind of those fees and handling. Walmart will charge you extra if they have to process um, product. And so those usually will come through as a 44, a 60, a 75, or a 120. Um, you're gonna actually want, if you are going and disputing this code, you're you're going to want to dispute all of the, the codes that go along with that. And it will actually pop up in the, um, while you're going and disputing it, if it is one of those codes, it will say, Hey, you need to dispute these codes as well that go along with it. So Walmart and the AP DP system, um, will kind of help you along with, with that problem. But, um, you're, you're, you're going to want to dispute everything together. Um, so if you are wanting to go and dispute it, there are going to be four different areas that you're going to want to check to determine the validity of this merchandise return. And that's not necessarily to say like Walmart didn't do something in error, but they're not going to accept, um, your, your, your dispute against this code, unless all four of these areas check out. So you're going to want to make sure that your online supplier agreement, which is what OSA stands for, is showing that um, you have the agreed upon defective allowance. And then you're going to want to grab um, grab the documentation that shows that your total cost of de defective returns to date versus how much you have actually paid in defective allowance. So do a little bit of, of math and digging to say like, hey, this is how much uh, we've agreed upon for our defective allowance. This is how much we've paid. And um, we've actually paid over what our agreed upon amount is. Next, you're going to want to grab your supplier agreement showing that your defective returns are not the responsibility of the supplier. Um, so that's again, going to be in your, your online supplier agreement or OSA. You're going to want to show that um, in your supplier agreement that um, defective returns must be re returned to the supplier um, and a statement um, that the goods were actually never received. So, you know, in your supplier agreement, um, you say, hey, if something is broken or something needs to be returned, I need you to send that to me. And if you never received it, then that can be a documentation that you provide. And then lastly, you're going to want to show pricing info that shows that the actual cost of the item is less than the cost of the deducted per item on the claim. Now, one thing I want to I want to make note of is you don't need all four of these in order to actually go and dispute it, but you do need at least one of these four areas um, in documentation around it so that you can actually go in and dispute that item with Walmart. Cool. Okay. Next, an example of a allowance. So this is going to be a code 59, which is a swell defective goods allowance. Um, so DM stands for defective goods allowance. SW stands for swell allowance. Um, this is negotiated whenever you are, again, setting up your, your contract with Walmart or whenever you're de deciding new terms. Um, and the main points of this is to help defray the costs that are involved with handling defective goods. So like that example that we were talking about previously, if there's anything that Walmart is actually having to handle that is you know broken or unusable in some way, they are going to expect for the supplier to actually go and, and pay for that in the form of an allowance. And so um, this it's a percentage base of all of the goods that are flowing through Walmart system. And um, usually they're going to want to have it be an adequate amount to cover all of defective goods markdowns or um, additional claims um, that they, they may file with you. So um, overall, this percentage is going to be applied to the total amount of all POs generated. 
Okay, and I think this might be our last one. Yeah, perfect, okay. And then we have a pricing. So this is one of our pricing codes. I think I talked about it a few slides ago where we have a code 10, which is one for the price difference. But there's a price um, difference based off of what was documented. So saying like, um, this is whenever a invoice comes across Walmart's you know, desk and they're looking at it and saying, hey, I see all of these allowances on the purchase order, but I don't see it on the invoice. Um, all of these disputes are actually going to go through the AP, DP, or the Accounts Payable Dispute Portal and Retail Link. Um, and if it is actually denied, sometimes we'll actually see um, these come through as denied and you can actually go and contact your buyer to request a payback. One thing that we, we say... <laughs> Often here um, at Supplier Wiggy or at Supply Pike is your mileage with your buyer may vary. Um, and you're also going to want to um, use that um, very sparingly. You know, your relationship with your buyer um, can determine what your success at Walmart. May that be um, more space or um, your price. And so if this is something that is really impacting your business, um, you know, use it sparingly with your buyer mentioning it to them and asking for that payback. If it's something that is not impacting your business in a big way, um, it just may be worth, you know, weighing out the pros and cons of um, leveraging relationship with them in order to, to try to get that money back. Awesome. Okay. So now we're going to dive in. Now that we've talked about the different codes and some of the examples, we're going to dive into APDP and all of the other apps inside of Retail Link and then how you can actually dispute inside of Retail Link. So um, this one, don't feel like you need to take screenshots because we will send this recording afterwards as well as the slide deck. So you'll be able to kind of go step by step if you're trying to dispute something and, and hopefully follow along. Okay, so what do you need before you actually go and dispute an AP deduction? It's going to vary depending on the specific type of deduction code, but this is generally what we suggest, um, especially if you're trying to go after a shortage-related deduction. We list all of the um, information or what you need to actually go and dispute inside of that ebook that I think Peter sent earlier on. Um, so if you're wanting a a very, you know, code by code breakdown of the different documents that you need. Um, it's going to have that in that um, Walmart deduction codes explained guide that you can go and follow. But high level, this is what you're going to need. You're going to need any relevant um, proof documentation, such as your proof of delivery, which is also called a POD, or your bill of lading, which is also called a BOL. You're going to want a copy of your invoice. Now, if you use an EDI provider, that is going to be the EDI code 810. So um, uh, typically Walmart is going to have all um, um, suppliers use a third party or do it or do EDI internally. Um, but if you're looking for a specific EDI code, that's what you're going to be looking for is going to be your, your invoice. Um, and then we have your purchase order, which is going to be the EDI 850. And then you're going to need your supplier agreement. So supplier agreement is going to be very helpful for those allowance um, related deductions or return related deductions. Awesome. Okay. So um, what information are you going to need from the actual claim itself? You're going to need the claim number um, for deductions that are related to an invoice. Your claim number is going to be your invoice number. You're going to need your claim date. Um, so usually this is going to be the actual specific date from the claim. It's not necessarily the invoice date or the check date. You're also going to need the dispute type. So that's going to be calculated from your store division number on the deduction check line and location type. Um, we'll go over that here in a second because I know that that sounds like a, a lot of words I just threw at you, but um, it's it's a little bit easier to calculate than, than this makes it seem. Um, awesome. Okay. So you'll also need the claim code. So this is actually given with a claim. Um, you're going to always want to group um, like claim codes together. So this is going to be like the deduction code and dispute them actually together. And then um, dispute amount. So this is going to be the amount that was actually deducted from your check based on the claim code. You're always going to want to dispute the full claim amount, even if you're only, you only know that part of it is invalid. Um, Walmart is usually going to reject the dispute if the dispute amount does not match the claim amount. So again, this is part of one of the things that Walmart potentially has automated where they're just looking to match um, 
as much together as they possibly can. And if there's any like discrepancies between what is actually um, deducted versus what you're disputed, it it can just automatically kind of be kicked out of the queue. So even if you only feel like you're due part of it, um, you're going to want to go ahead and just dispute the full amount so that someone can go and look at it. And, and usually they'll, they'll be able to tell, oh, I only actually need to take this much out of it and I will dispute or I will di pay back partial. Some other information that you're going to need is your supplier number. So this is going to be your six digit rather than your nine digit supplier number. Um, you're going to want to make sure that that matches from the supplier number on the claim. There are some suppliers who I know have quite a few of these supplier numbers, especially if you've been part of like an acquisition type of situation. Um, so you're just going to want to make sure that that matches. And then you're going to want your purchase order number. So that's going to be Walmart's purchase order that they sent you. And then your freight carrier. This is optional. Um, we find that this is not necessarily something that you absolutely need. If you have that information available, it doesn't hurt to add it, but it also, I wouldn't go, you know, searching for it. Other information, um, so location, this is going to be required depending on the type of the dispute. This is the location of the store in the DC where the claim originated, and you can find that on the check line um, and usually the claim document. Next, you're going to need the shipping method. So this is going to be collect versus prepaid. If you don't know um, necessarily how you're shipping or how this particular shipment was um, given to Walmart, just choose collect if, if you're not sure. And then description, um, short and sweet is the best. This is optional. It's not required. Um, we find that this is another thing that, ended, that people who are actually going and reviewing the disputes um, rarely, rarely read. Okay. Shipping documents. I, I listed a few um, at the, the top of kind of this section. Um, this, why you need this is because it, it proves that the item on the invoice were picked up or delivered in full. So it's your proof documentation. Um, it's the type of document that you need is going to be dependent on how you're shipping. So if you're shipping collect, you're going to have a bill of lading. If you're shipping prepaid, you're going to have a proof of delivery or a drop trailer stamp. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the terms collect versus prepaid, um, collect is basically saying that Walmart is taking the um, responsibility of the shipment um, and you are giving Walmart basically a discount on the price of goods that you are, you are giving them because they are taking on the responsibility and the cost of actually collecting the items, collecting the shipment and transporting it to their DCs. Versus prepaid, meaning that you are um, you are paying for the cost of shipping and you have the responsibility of shipping the product to to Walmart's DCs. Um, each come with their own pros and cons, um, but each also come with their own different documents that you need in order to actually go and dispute. Okay, so this is kind of the workflow that I was talking about um, a few sections ago on what to do um, based off of it being invalid or valid. So. Um, Walmart only allows for you to dispute within a two year time window. So if there is a deduction that is given, or if you don't go and dispute something outside, if you dispute something outside of a two year time window, um, it it's invalid, you're not gonna win any money back. I, I suggest not even um, wasting your time on those, really only looking at stuff within two years. And you're gonna probably wanna go after the oldest ones first because um, if you're unable to get to them before they expire, um, you're just not gonna be able to get to them. So define the time period um, that you're wanting to go and dispute for. Um, typically we suggest going in kind of addressing a single type of deduction. So say, hey, I wanna go after all of my shortages today. I wanna go after all of my returns today, just because we find that it's easier to be kind of in that mindset, go and get the documentation that you need, um, especially if it's something like an allowances, if you're going after all allowances at the same time, you're gonna be just sending them your supplier agreement over and over. So um, sometimes that makes it a little bit easier. Next, you're going to want to go and find your invoice on the accounts payable inquiry system. So go and find, um, you know, all of the, the documents and you're going to just kind of do a validity check. So you're going to be looking at all of the different documents that you've acquired. So your bill of lading or your supplier agreement, your invoice versus the PO and determine, okay, is this a valid or invalid deduction? If it's invalid, you're going to 
gather all of those proof documents that you have, and you're actually going to just be it on an APDP. And then you're going to save that documentation later for claims and audits. Again, post audits can be taken again, even if you win, win the deduction, Walmart can come back and say, actually, we shouldn't have, you shouldn't have won that deduction. We're going to take that money back. Or if the deduction comes out that it is actually valid and that Walmart did not take that deduction in error, um, then you're going to be thinking about processes that you can you can develop in order to avoid future deductions. Like um, sometimes we'll go and see that a supplier has a lot of breakage or carton shortage on a very specific type of item. And then we'll start talking about, you know, is is the packaging for this item? Do we need a, to do we need to make adjustments for that? You know, what are kind of the root causes that we can we can go and and think about in order to prevent these deductions from happening? Because that's really just lost money. Um, you can still dispute on APDP even if you feel like the deduction is valid. That's not really something that I suggest. Um, like it 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 if you've determined that Walmart actually did take this um, correctly, then, um, you're probably not going to want to go and, and waste your time to actually go and dispute it and monitor it. Um, but no matter what, you're going to want to save all of your documentation later for claims or audits. Okay. The AP tool landscape. So there are different apps. I know I've been mentioning them a lot, but we have the accounting scorecard. This is going to be a temperature check of all of your invoices and just measures the invoice accuracy, um, from your invoice to your EDI. Um, this is just a helpful thing to kind of go and look at, but, um, typically that's not going to be the first place that you're going to start. Um, it's just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind of a place that you can go and check if you're seeing a lot of those, um, invoice type deductions or discrepancy type deductions coming through. Next, we have APIS, so Accounts Payable Inquiry System. Um, this is going to store all of your invoice and claim information. Um, this is where you can view, pull, payment, checks, claims, everything in APIS. And then lastly, we have APDP. This is where you're actually going to go and be disputing all of your deductions. It is the dispute portal. Okay, here is how you can spot, spot a Walmart deduction. Um, so this is APIS. Um, so you can, this is like what it would look like coming across. Um, so um, I'll just highlight a couple of things here. We have the deduction code over here. So um, this is where you would be able to go. And if you have that deduction code explain guide, look up that number and see kind of a, a deeper dive into um, what this means, how to prevent it, what documents you need. Here's a short little deduction description. Not all deduction codes are going to have a description. Um, unfortunately, um, there are some codes, like I think some in the hundreds, um, that we'll see it pretty commonly come back without a deduction description. Um, and you, you would have to rely solely on the code in order to determine what this is. Here's the claim amount. So this is how much is actually being deducted from you. Item numbers, claim quantity. Here's the claim date. Um, as we mentioned, it's not the same as the check date. Um, here's the claim total. So this is the amount, you know, sum of all of this. But this is what a what a deduction looks like um, on a claim. Now, this is accounts, the APDP portal. This is kind of one of the main screens that you're going to come into and you'll see. Um, as I mentioned, um, all most AP level deduction codes can actually be disputed on APDP. Um, Genpact is actually a third party um, that Walmart employs that goes and reviews all of the, the disputes. A few years ago, there was another portal called Direct Commerce. If you guys are familiar with that, I kind of miss Direct Commerce. Maybe I shouldn't, but um, it, it Direct Commerce went away. Genpact is still here. Um, if you are looking for old, you know, a few years ago data, um, any of the direct commerce disputes that you've submitted are, are not going to be available through APDP. It's, it's, you'll need to go and get access to the old direct commerce platform in order to, to view those. Um, and then you can redispute re up to three times. Um, so I've I've seen suppliers before um, go and actually just dispute everything that they have. Um, so they they don't provide documentation. They don't 
They don't go and determine the validity. They just go and dispute everything, um, hoping that it will save them time in the long run. Um, Cause some of them you actually can immediately win money back. Um, we've seen some deductions um, get approved in, um, or some disputes get approved within minutes, which leads us to believe um, that there was a system that was automatically improving it rather than a rather than a human. Um, but one of the reasons why I caution against doing that is just because you do only have three chances. So if you go and dispute something and then Walmart kicks it back to you and you've already you know lost a chance potentially to go and win that money back. So you know, everyone has their own kind of um, tactics that they utilize, but um, that is just one thing that I, I may caution you guys against. Okay, so um, there's two different types of disputes that you can submit in APDP. There's invoice-based disputing versus claim line level disputes. Invoice is whenever you're disputing an entire invoice. Um, so this was whenever you're looking up a claim or an invoice record and then creating a dispute from that record versus claim line is going to be a little bit deeper and you're actually doing an individual dispute for each claim line that you want to challenge inside of an invoice. So I'm um, saying like, hey, I want to actually only challenge these couple of codes, but not this one versus invoice is whenever you're, you're challenging the entire thing on the invoice. Okay, so this is how you are actually going to create a dispute. So you're going to hit create dispute button. You're going to select your six, six digit vendor number. You're going to select claim um, next to create dispute based on. So that's whenever this information up here is helpful. You're then going to want to enter your claim number that you got from APIS or APIS, um, or just enter a date range of what you're wanting to go after. So if you're saying, hey, I want to go after everything that was about two years ago, um, this is whenever you can select it click your search button. Here, you're going to see all of the claims that come through. Um, so if you want to create a dispute, you can actually hit the create dispute over here. And then you're going to want to um, go ahead and select the, ind if you, the individual items. So um, if you're wanting to dispute a claim line, you're going to want to check this box right here that we've kind of highlighted. Um, as I mentioned before, there are some codes that you need to be disputed along with other codes. So think about those returns that we talked about. So it will kind of pop up a um, little warning for you, you know, letting you know, like, hey, you need to go after all of these. And then you're going to update the fields as needed. So all of the fields that we talked about earlier in this section, this is whenever you would go and you would insert it. You're going to want to attach any proof documentation. So um, using this attach proof for multi-lines. Um, um, this is one thing that I really, I highly suggest for people to do. Um, so one thing that we found out with um, inside of APDP is they also offer mass dispute creation or MDC, um, where you can actually go and dispute, I think it's about a hundred different um, deductions at a single time. The only limit for that is that it doesn't allow for you to attach proof documentation, mm -hmm. which takes the average win rate where if you submit proof is like 82, 87% for shortage related deductions. Um, all the way down to eight. So if you are not attaching proof documentation to something like a shortage deduction, um, you are severely undercutting your success, your potential success um, for, for winning that dispute. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, okay, so now after adding all of that dispute information and documentation, you're going to want to click the next button at the bottom of the page. After clicking that next button, you can actually still go back and you can edit it. Um, you can save it. Drafts are saved for 14 days. If you don't submit the dispute after that, um, it will actually cancel the dispute. And then finally, if now you've done that, you've tapped your proof documentation, you filled out all of the information, you've identified the ones that you're wanting to go after. Um, a pop-up window is going to appear. It's going to show you your case numbers and your dispute numbers. You can take a screenshot of this, but you'll also be able to reference it later on in the system. So um, just some benchmark information for you guys here. The total average payback timeline from um, submitted to paid is around 51 days. About 50 or 49% of those disputes are actually approved within seven days. 
Um, there are a, there's kind of a long tail of other deductions that, um, you know, can take up to 45 days to actually be approved. And then typically once your deduction has been approved, it's going to be paid back within a week. So you're going to see that on a check within a week. Um, about 2% of approved disputes are going to take longer than 14 days. If it's taking you longer than 14 days, so if it's been three months, um, but a deduction has been approved, and it hasn't been repaid, you're going to want to go and kind of bubble that up to someone in Walmart. Um, I think it is called the, oh man, I forget the name. There is a number that we have, maybe it's on one of these future slides that you guys can go and call or submit a ticket with, um, that can be really helpful into just tracking where, um, where, where that money is. Peter Romani, is it like an EBC global business services? electronic business services. Do you know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, okay. I think that's the one. That's or at least that's the one that I was thinking of as you were mentioning that. Perfect. So I can I can send a link for that here too. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Now disputing for collect suppliers. Um Walmart standards is you have about two years to dispute, as I mentioned. Um, but if a carrier claim needs to be fi filed, um, suppliers, you're usually going to have nine to 12 months to dispute after the merchandise is, is delivered. So if you are collect, you have a shorter time frame. You can go and dispute something. After that, Walmart is probably going to go and deny your claims. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that you're watching out for claims that are created at the tail end of that supplier disputing window. Um, so best advice that we have for you guys is stay as up to date as you possibly can for collect disputes. Um, so you can avoid running out to this, running out for this issue. So again, nine to 12 months for collect carrier claims, two years for um, standard disputing for AP related fines. Here are the dispute windows for some of the cloud carriers. So um, again, don't feel like you have to screenshot this, but it does vary um, based on the actual carrier that you're using. And now we're at a Q&A. Perfect. Look at that timing. Okay. I still haven't found that thing yet. So I'm going to keep looking for that while I ask you this question um, from Tina that you can probably um, read as well. Um, in high radius, if you are given an overage and you want to bill for the overage, is there a breakdown of product and number of overage? I can only find the PO and the overage amount, not the breakdown that makes up that overage per each PO. Basically, PO number XYZ, overage of five pieces, for example, and there were five lines shipped on the order, so I do not know what the item overage is to bill back. Okay. I do actually have something that I can, I got a little help with this question while we were in the webinar too. So. Well, do you uh, want to answer it? Well, yeah. So the, we got two little kind of things is that um, uh, the overages that you get in high radius, I think are just SQUEP overages. Um, so that is a, that is a distinction here between basically um uh how would we say billable overages and then like performance based uh overage fines um so let me just make sure that i'm reading this exactly overage fines that come across in high radius happen uh via the squep program so um you can find the full detail um in the, for those fines in the squep dashboard um app and that will include the item info and the quantity information there. So does that make sense? I think that you could still use that to make, uh, uh, to turn the overage into a kind of a billable thing. Um, that's how you would start that process, I think. Does that answer your question? Uh, I mean, I guess you can't answer back, but <laughs> in, uh, type if, if she's still on the call. Yeah, let us know, Tina. Oh, perfect. She said, yes, thank you. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Well, and I see that there's not any other questions. Um, I'm going to just move us along so we can dive into that product demo, but um, here are some 
resources on supplier wiki that you guys can access. I know that Peter was, was working hard at, at sending some of those to you guys in the chat. So um, if you're curious, some of the ones that I mentioned here today were like the ultimate guide to OTIF, the deduction codes explained. Um, we also have a similar um, type cheat sheet on packaging and labeling um, for Walmart. So go check that out. Um, and then here are actual emails. Please feel free to email us. Um, yeah, we're, we're always happy to answer any questions or you can find us at supplypack.com. If you go to supplypack.com up in the top um, right-hand corner, there mm -hmm. is actually like a little meeting link that you guys can click on. Um, you can book a personal demo with us there or you can um, just throw some time on our calendar and we can we can hopefully answer some questions for you guys. Awesome. So now I'm going to go over, is there anything else you wanted to cover, Peter? Sorry, I just kind of took over that section. Nope, that's good for me. I'm going to keep looking for that business uh, um, center uh, contact number uh, and information just in case that is relevant to anyone still on the call. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to, I hope that this is start a new share. Okay, perfect. Hopefully everyone can see my screen, um, but this is our deductions product for Walmart. So if this is where you guys jump off with us, um, thank you so much for joining us here today and learning all about um, Walmart and um, their AP deduction process. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Supply Pike and how Supply Pike can potentially help you with your deductions, um, please feel free to stay. And I'm just going to be giving a really quick overview of our product. Um, this is the, the only part of the pitch um, that that we give. So please feel free to jump off if if this is where we leave you. It was, it was great seeing everyone and 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 presenting to you guys today. But awesome. Okay. So um, for those of you who are curious about our Walmart deduction platform, um, this is the main screen that I would suggest or you, you guys would probably get very comfortable with. So this is all of the deductions that you have received from Walmart. As you can see, we have other products as well for a variety of different retailers, such as Kroger, Target, Amazon, Hope Depot, and CVS. Um, you would be able to see all of your deductions based off of the retailers in each of these platforms. So um, here we're calling out which deductions are expiring. Um, we have very high level information. You can see the ones that are actionable that you can actually go and dispute. But some of my favorite things to do um, as I'm working through deductions is I actually click this readiness button up here at the top. I select the likely valid or invalid deductions, and these are determined. Um, Supply Pike determines these by looking at a variety of different apps and stitching a lot of information together. So instead of you having to go and do all of that research yourself, we do it for you. Um, we will also make note of any of that proof documentation. So um, we will connect to your carriers, your 3PLs, your warehouses, um, all of your systems and get all of, aggregate all of the proof documentation that you need. And then we will actually even say, hey, this deduction is ready based off of the proof documentation that we have, um, based off of all of the best practices and the benchmarks that we have of what documentation do you need per code. So typically what I would do is select valid, invalid, proof documentation ready, and then sort this list by that, and then just kind of work through my deductions that way. So next I'm going to click on this. You can see that I've already collected all of, or Supply Pick has already collected all of the proof documentation that I need. I can add other documents if I want to. This deduction looks good good to me. I don't have anything else that I want to add. And so I can just hit the submit button and it will actually go ahead and submit it to Walmart for me. So a lot of that work that we just kind of covered of determining validity, gathering documents, all of that is kind of done for me. So I can do everything in a single click. Now, if I'm like, hey, this is still not fast enough for me. I want something faster, which for me, I personally do. There's not enough time in the day. What I can do is I can actually go and select up to 100 different deductions at one time. And again, I've already in this scenario, I've already said, I want to go after ones that are likely invalid or invalid. The proof documentation is ready. And I can submit all of those in two clicks. So you can submit 100 deductions in two clicks, um, very easy. And unlike what we had talked about earlier in the presentation where um, 
you know, if you're not adding that proof documentation, Walmart, your win rate is going to be drastically impacted. We are collecting that proof documentation. So you can submit all of that and expect, um, expect your deductions to be at that 87% win rate um, for shortage related. So making it a lot easier. Um, now, if you're like, hey, Melody, that's still not fast enough. 100 deductions and two clicks. No, I, I need it faster. I I have things I got to do. Well, you're in luck because we have auto disputing. So for specific types of codes, like the ones that you're you're typically going to have the majority of, um, such a shortage, sh such as these code 13s and everything, you can actually turn on auto disputing, which means as soon as we have that proof documentation, um, we can actually go and submit that dispute for you. So you actually don't even have to click a button if you don't want to. You can also select a variety level of criteria. So if you're saying, I actually only want you to go after codes 22s that are likely invalid and I want to have a threshold of only going after deductions that are under or are under two hundred dollars you can actually set that in here um and that those will be the only deductions that we actually go and dispute for you so yeah, that's a very high level overview of our Walmart deduction product. as you guys can see over here we actually help with a variety of different um revenue loss types. So we also help with overages. So actually going and billing for overages, post audits, we help with OTIF and SWEP. So there's a lot here, a lot more functionality here that, that we can potentially help you so that your, your cost to serve Walmart isn't as high as, as, as it may be today. Um, the last thing we'll make note of for the deduction product that we have is, um, we have, um, a dashboard that buckets a lot of the information that may be a little bit difficult to compile um, by yourself today manually. We just compile that all here for you. We also have root cause, which is really cool. Um, so we will actually determine some of the root cause issues. Um, so thinking about some of those preventative measures that you could be taking and showing, okay, if I have a receiving error um, based off my ASNs, what actually can I be going and doing in order to prevent that from happening? And how much money is that? actually costing me. So we have that both on this kind of high level basis, but you can actually view that on an individual deduction level basis as well. Very, very high level. Is there anything else that you want me to cover, Peter? Nope. I think that's all great. I, uh, I left the um, uh, link in the chat for the enterprise business contact uh, information ticket submission. Um, so that's a retail link link, which is why it took me so long to track down. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for us today. Um, thank you all for joining us. It's been a, it's been a good one. It's great to see everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, it's, it's Friday Eve, you guys. Hopefully you have some fun weekend plans, but I, I appreciate you guys joining us today. See y'all.